You know, I am not a smart man. And after reading all the things that I've been reading about the Eagles today, I am even dumber than I was this morning. That's right. It is getting harder and harder to calculate the calculations of the cornbread because I can't do math and I can't remember numbers. I'm getting really dumb. And I'm already dumb, but that's just the way it is. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. You know, they say... If you're expecting a different result, then you have to do things differently. If you keep doing the same thing over and over and expect another result, it's not going to happen. And I tell you that here's in my analogy of the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I'll try and do two of them so that way different regions will understand. But like, let's say you're in, say, New Orleans or, uh, or the Carolinas or Florida. You understand that when they say there is a hurricane that's headed right your way, what you do if you need to board up you're going to home depot you're getting your osb you're putting it up on the windows you're packing your bags you're getting bottles of water you're getting ready for the storm or if you're say in like colorado or buffalo or you know up in pennsylvania and things you know and they say you're about to get a nor'easter you're about to get three feet of snow or in buffalo's cape 10 feet of snow you go out, you go to the store, you get some bread, you get some milk and all that and some toilet tissue. I don't understand why everybody's worried about running out of toilet tissue and everything, but be that as it may. You go out there and you get in those lines, you get all your stuff to make sure you're prepared when the storm hits. That ain't the Cowboys. The Cowboys are the ones that are sitting there waiting and saying, it might not hit us. So I'm going to wait until the storm gets here before I go to the store. So here comes the hurricane. You're feeling the winds are picking up in the rain and you're going to Home Depot and it's closed. Or you said, I'm not, man, I've been fooled before. You know, it might not hit us. You already got a couple inches of snow on the ground. And you say, you know, this might be real this time. And you go to the store, ain't no bread, ain't no milk, ain't no butter, ain't no toilet tissue, ain't no bottles of water. You've missed out. And this is my biggest problem with the Dallas Cowboys. I've always, I, I, and you, it's not new. I'm just putting this in, trying to put this in layman terms, because I always say the Cowboys are always reactive instead of proactive. Some people understand that. Some people may not understand it. But proactive means you plan for shit that's going to happen. There's a plan B. There's a backup plan. Reactive means when something happens, how are we going to react and fix it? How are you going to react and fix it? And herein lies the problem for the Cowboys. They always look at it and say, well, we'll go to the draft and we'll draft the places we need to and we'll fill up the roster. Well, what if the guys that you end up wanting to draft to fill these positions to take care of the needs you have, what if the guys that you've targeted aren't there? Or what if they're not ready to be there? Like a schoonmaker, you looked and said, well, we're going to have problems with tight end. Let's get ourselves a tight end. And he can't practice all off season because he's got a problem with his foot. And that brings up another question that we have here, too, is always trying to get a bargain and going for people that are discounted for one reason or another. Off the field issues or injury history and things like that. You know, I, I'm more of one of those guys that say, let me get somebody who's unmarked, unscathed. Because you don't all of a sudden have injuries in the past and all of a sudden they just go away. They don't just go away. Once you get injured, you, it's a little easier to get injured again and again and again. You know, we kept looking at Tony Romo and say, let's bring back Tony. And I said, it's time to move on from Tony Romo because he couldn't stay on the field. He couldn't stay on the field. It wasn't that I didn't like Tony Romo, but I understood your best ability is your availability. 
So the Cowboys constantly waiting and waiting and waiting always ends up messing it up on them. And it's not that they haven't had opportunities. They wait. They don't do anything when the primo guys are there in free agency. They say, no, that's too expensive. No, we'll, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait till the dust clears. We'll wait till the dust clears and, and we'll deal with it then. By that time, all the good players are gone. The cheaper ones or the ones that have the injury history or the attitude problems, they're there, but that's what you're using to try and fix it. That's the problem with the Cowboys. We have known since we lost, actually, we knew before we lost to the Green Bay Packers that people wanted to talk to Dan Quinn. They just did. Maybe he had already checked out. Maybe he already had in his mind, this year, I'm going to take that. This is when the Cowboys should have started working on plan B. Because you had to figure, and you've got warning signs all along. You know, Al Harris says, I'll go and do whatever he wants. We heard rumors that that, uh, Joe Witt was going to go, of course, with Dan Quinn to Seattle. And so you had to figure that if Dan Quinn does go, that you're going to be losing all these people. And I hope that you've already had it in your mind because it seemed like Ron Rivera just kind of popped up a few days ago. It was like, oh, well, you know, if Dan Quinn goes, because they had already said Dan Quinn comes back, he's our guy. I don't think that they took it any further than that. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know. I'm not a fly on the wall. I'm not an insider. I'm here, not in my mama's basement, but my basement, bringing you what we're putting together. But I don't think that the Dallas Cowboys gave it another thought other than they said, well, we can bring in Ron Rivera. You know, let's say that so that way at least we look like we have a plan. Now, we do know Ron Rivera is going to come in for an interview. And last night, um, they started talking about Mike Zimmer wants to coach at the Cowboys. He's interested in the job. Now, we've heard people interested in doing stuff for the Cowboys. We heard Von Miller was. We heard Bobby Wagner was, okay? We've heard lots of people that have wanted to work with the Cowboys, but the Cowboys have been kind of, meh, whatever. Now, Mike Zimmer, I think, might be a better fit than Ron Rivera for a couple of reasons. Now, he runs, you know, typically he was running a 4-3 defense, but he has done 3-4-4-3, which might be a good thing because, see, here's the thing that you also have to understand is you can't fit a square peg into a round hole. You have to be able to look and say, you know, like let, let's say you're here and you, the, the store, you, know, you got that storm here and you can't go to the store and get anything. And so you have to look in the cabinet and the refrigerator and see what do I have that I can put a meal together with. Maybe you want to have, you know, filet mignon, but you got pork chops in the fridge. So you're going to have to make something with the pork chops. And let's see. Oh, here's some mushrooms. And let's see what else we got. Um, We got some heavy cream. We got some chicken broth here. Oh, let me check my spices. Okay. uh, Oh, there's some rosemary up there and some thyme, and I got some garlic. Okay, so I can take, instead of having that filet mignon that I want, I can go ahead and take the pork chops and those mushrooms and saute them with some butter and put some thyme and rosemary and garlic in there and use the chicken broth along with the heavy cream and make a gravy on top of them. And I can take the pork chops and I can go ahead and, you know, bread them and fry them and make me, you know, a nice pork chop. It's not the filet mignon that I wanted, but this is a real good meal too with what I had in the cabinet. See, I'm trying, I'm trying to break it down so it's simplified, okay? And here's the problem is, as we look at whoever comes in here, You got the personnel that you have that's here, and you can't turn it all over, especially with the way the Cowboys do things as far as going for bottom basement free agents in the draft. You can't convert it all in one season. So you need a guy who can kind of do things with what you have. I will say one of the greatest coaches, even though he was a Washington Redskins coach, was Joe Gibbs, who recognized that. He came from Air Coriel, which was throw the ball deep in the hell with the run game. But he got to Washington and didn't have the personnel for it, so he came up with a one-back running offense with a bruising running back of John Riggins and eh, a so-so quarterback in Joe Theismann and rode that pony all the way to the Super Bowl. He evolved with the talent that he had on the field, and that's what we need right there. 
And I think he would be able to do that with what we have here, be it we need some more pieces. He knows the Cowboys, so this is almost kind of back to Cowboys roots because they always like to hire within. They always like to bring somebody they're familiar with. And Mike Zimmer started really his uh, NFL career with the Cowboys under Barry Switzer. Um, brief history on him. Um, he was assistant coach on, on the, you know, he was a D-back coach, believe it or not. Uh, assistant coach on nickel defense with Barry Switzer. He was promoted to defensive back coach in 95, served in that ca- capacity before being promoted to defensive coordinator in 2000. Um, the 2003 Dallas Cowboys defense gave up the fewest yards in the NFL while Ryan running an aggressive, speedy 4-3 defense. Despite the Cowboys' problems over the years, Zimmer survived several coaches, Switzer, Chan Gailey, Dave Campo, <clears throat> and Bill Parcells. And so eventually he ended up going with Bobby Paterno and being defense coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons for a year um, and then went to the Cincinnati Bengals and was their um, – defensive coordinator over there um, as well until he finally in 2014 became the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Um, he's about 67 years old. You know, he's he's not a spring chicken, but the guy has lots of energy. So we'll see what happens with that. We know that Ron Rivera is coming in. I'm With Ron Rivera, Ron Rivera is not an idiot. And unfortunately, he was in a bad situation with the Washington Commanders. Um, that's a place that coaching careers go to die. Um, I'm not sure that Ron Rivera would be the one for me. I'm just saying, I just, it seems like Ron Rivera, I don't know if it was just being in Washington or if it was the cancer or whatever, um, but it seemed like Ron Rivera just did not have any fire any longer. He just seemed like he was just there. And that's just my own personal opinion. I don't know. Maybe it was that he was just sick of being there and needed to change the scenery and knew that things were just going downhill. The problem for the Cowboys, of course, is, uh, you know, people, of course, will throw names and say, oh, get Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick's not coming to the cesspool. Bill Belichick, how are you going to go from being a seven-time Super Bowl champion coach working under Mike McCarthy? Forget about it. That ain't happening. Mike Vrabel, Mike Vrabel was actually a defensive coordinator for one year with the Titans before he became the head coach. I don't think Mike Vrabel's coming. So we'll see what we're going to see. Let's hear what the talking heads have to say about the coaching situation and see if we got anything different. I have yet to watch this, so I'll be watching it for the first time this morning. Cowboys defensive coordinator taking the job as the head coach of the Washington Commanders. He replaces Ron Rivera, who was fired by new owner Josh Harris one day after the season ended. Now, how did Quinn do in Dallas? Opposing quarterbacks had a tough time against the Cowboys over his three seasons as defensive coordinator. Dallas D led the league in interception percentage, sack percentage, and pressure percentage over that span. And during that same span, the Commanders ranked in the bottom half of the league in each category. So, Dan Quinn out in Dallas, head man now in Washington. Mike Tannenbaum joined us, joining us as I promised. I want to know, what do we think of this move for Washington, D. Wood? Yeah, listen, I mean, listen we all know the question about the, they had the number two, number two overall pick that's probably going to be a quarterback, so it remains to be seen what the offensive staff is going to be looking like. I will say this, the one thing I like about the move is they're hurting a division rival in the mm. Dallas Cowboys. Mm. Obviously, we saw what the work Dan Quinn did with that defensive unit since he arrived in Dallas. That's going to be a tremendous loss. And then on, on couple that with the fact that uh, you know Mike McCarthy is in a lame duck year. Right. How do they replace get a, get a, a viable defensive coordinator in on a lame duck coach? That's a real thing, right, Mike T? I, how, I mean, like if Mike McCarthy only has one year left, that might make it more difficult for a, to lure a top defensive coordinator there. Yeah, absolutely, Graz. D. Wood makes a really good point, which is when prospective defensive coordinators are coming in, they're going to want a multi-year deal, and everybody knows that Coach McCarthy is on a one-year deal. So it could be a situation where somebody that's working for Mike McCarthy has a longer-term contract than he does, and that's awkward. I've been in that situation, Dan. The head coach, his agent's calling saying, hey, we need an extension. We can't attract the, the best candidates. And the irony, this is really intriguing in terms of the NFC East. So Dan Quinn... 
goes to Washington, that hurts Dallas. And who do you see as names to potentially replace him? Ron Rivera, the former head coach of the Commanders. Don Martindale, the former defense coordinator of the Giants. So this is really interesting how it's going to play out in the coming days. What do you think, Kmart? I think a lot, if you're a Commanders fan, you're probably feeling like, ah, this is a little anticlimactic. We're the last team to get a head coach. I, I think you make an excellent point about taking from your rival. My question is, now I think the Commanders, in hindsight, realize we probably would have preferred to hire somebody a little sooner because now you look at the board, it's not just who will want to come, but the pie, the, pile, the pie of people who are still available now. Like, all the top OCs are already off the board. And Dan Quinn, this is a team that needs a quarterback, needs to develop one, and you want to make sure that whoever you bring in, whoever you bring in, OC, DC, whatever, that they're the best guy for the job, but obviously there aren't as many candidates Available. And the flip side, that's true for Dallas, which now needs a defense exactly. coordinator and doesn't have the same exactly. kind of pool uh, to pull from. What were you going to say? Yeah, no, I was just going, going back to our meeting this morning. One of the things that you're going to probably start seeing, we start seeing a lot of these uh, NFL coaches who are in college come back to the NFL. So that's another pool yeah, that, that you know, that he probably could, you know, Dan Quinn could dip into as well. Mike T. And Dan, just to be balanced here, we got to look at the Tampa Bay situation a year ago. Everyone thought that Todd Bowles had one year to go, cap dead money, Tom Brady retires. They're not going to get anybody yeah. to coach a quarterback that they didn't even have. Baker Mayfield goes there. Dave Canales comes from Seattle, and the rest is history. They have a great year, win a playoff game, and now Dave Canales is an NFL head coach. So it can be done, but it's far from ideal for Dallas because it's going to be hard to get people to come there, including players, by the way, when your head coach is on a one-year deal. Well, that's the thing. Like, I'm looking at the, the week that Dallas has had, right? We opened up by talking about, <laughs> oh my God, please. right? Like, players, no family more. members ripping the quarterback. <laughs> yes. We have, you know, Jerry Jones saying whatever he said the other day. <laughs> well, now you lose was. your defensive coordinator. At, at what point does this become too much for it the is, Cowboys? It, guys, it's too much. It's too much now. <laughs> Not for you, um, for the Cowboys. No, I, I, it is too much because think about how they ended the season, how they played yeah. as yeah. the Packers. You look at that and you said, how did they go out with a whimper like that again? And then you look at, okay, that defensive performance, that offensive performance, now we lose the D.C. They were trying to instill some, some excitement with this fan base, like, hey, guys, believe in us. We have a championship culture, except we haven't been in the NFC title game in forever. Like, mm -hmm. there's a, I don't, when you look at the Cowboys, there are more questions than answers, and this is a team with too many veteran pieces, a veteran quarterback, a veteran head coach, where you shouldn't have these many questions heading into you another You shouldn't. Season. And I want to remind everyone what Jerry Jones is, you know, said in his, you know, interview yeah. down at, at the Senior Bowl was that they are all in this year. Unlike previous years where they are <laughs> this all, is they're, the year. they're this, all, guys, they're this all is the in year. this year. Yeah, they're all in this year, but you know, now your defensive so coordinator is going. You still got Dak yeah. Prescott's contract yep. that you gotta CD, deal with. Micah. CD, Micah. I mean, this there's a there's a laundry list of things that they gotta do. Quick final word, Mike T. Hey, yeah, Jerry Jones is a smart and calculated guy. When he announces that Mike McCarthy is not getting an extension and someone like Bill Belichick is out there. After every single loss, the speculation mm -hmm. is going to increase that an owner well mm -hmm. into his 80s with the greatest coach of all time on the sidelines, that speculation is just going to get louder and louder during the season. But Jerry had a chance. That's what I'm saying. Jerry had a chance to hire Bill. Okay, we'll leave it there. All right, good people. So, Dallas Cowboys. They are a mess as always. Um, I don't know. I just don't know. It is what it is. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, you, you got two choices. You have to, if you're a Cowboy fan, yes, I'm a Cowboy fan, and I understand that it's going to be a roller coaster of emotions when you're a Cowboy fan. If you don't like this, if you don't like the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, then you just have to get another team. Just do. And we have to recognize that that's the case of being a Cowboy fan. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you guys. Peace out. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report.